I'm going to show you how to create a help desk agent for your IT site so that users can quickly get answers to their questions without even having to call a help desk up or email them for support. This is going to be leveraging a document library where we've already got some knowledge saved so that you can just quickly get this thing up and running. And we're going to test this out so you see how it works. Let's get into it. So I'm on my IT SharePoint site right now. And on this site, I've got a knowledge base document library where I've got some, some documents that talk about how to handle, you know, all the common things that users will call the help desk for assistance with. We're going to improve this whole process for them. So to get started, uh, you will need an M365 Copilot license, or you will need pay-as-you-go billing enabled. There's some information down in the description below if you want to get more information on that pay-as-you-go billing. Otherwise, in this case, I've got an M365 Copilot license. So what I'm able to do is I'm going to ground on all of the documents in here because this is a knowledge base library. So everything in there is really part of the knowledge base. I want this is this Copilot agent to use. What I'm going to do is I can click on the new button and I can click on create an agent. Now, but before I do that, if there were only certain files you wanted this, this uh, agent to be able to use, you would just select those particular files and then you would go to the create an agent button. Notice we'll also have it on the toolbar up here. When you select multiple files, you'll see create an agent is also available here. So you, it's, it's, it's in multiple places uh, for, so that you can quickly create something the way you want to. If you want to use the toolbar or the, the command bar, you can. In fact, let's just click on it that way. And what we're going to see now is that the agent is actually ready to use. It really just took one click to create an agent, but we've got a lot more work we want to do with this because it's going to be more general. It's not going to necessarily know how we want this to behave, what, what we're expecting from it, the, the types of things that someone may be asking it about. So we need to give it all that important context. And we do that with the system instructions. So we're going to be doing that. To, we could click on open agent, but instead we're going to click on the edit button. This is going to take us in here and do the most important thing you should do with any of these SharePoint agents, and that's to rename it. It will have a generic name, usually based on the document library, and that's not good. It's not, trust me when I say, you're going to end up with a whole lot of agents that say just the word document, documents agent. You'll see that. Um, and it's it's not good. You You want to rename these things. So I'm going to call this help desk agent, because this is going to be visible not only on the IT site, but it's going to be available in a lot of other surfaces across M365 as well. So we want someone to see help desk agent and know exactly what this is going to help them with. We can change the icon if we want to, and then we can give it a description here. And for the description, we can type in, um, this is an agent that assists users with technical issues. Now we need to go and double check the sources tab because this is where we're gonna be able to configure what, what uh, locations within M365 this can find information on to, to help uh, with, with uh, grounding, to, to provide responses to different prompts that users will type in or different questions they type in. In this case, we've just got our one document library, the knowledge base one. That's all I want for this because I'm lucky enough, being a demo environment, I have one source of information. If you had multiple libraries, maybe uh, broken out by topic or, or something like that, then you could include multiple libraries here. Or if you had individual files, you could add those files here as well. There's a limit, I believe 20 is the magic number. You can have 20 different things, whether those are libraries, folders, sites, or files. And what we're going to do here is we're going to click on the behavior tab. This is the other part, uh, the, other, the other part of configuring this. So we can configure a welcome prompt here. So we can change this out to, um, I can help you with any 
technical questions or issues you may have. Uh, how can I help you? So whenever someone starts a conversation with this agent, that's what it's going to re respond with first. You'll see a preview over in this test, this agent section, where you'll see that welcome prompt and you'll see some starter prompt here as well. So if somebody were to uh, click on one of these buttons, it would just copy that text down into the prompt button so they can make any last minute edits and then hit the generate button. Uh, we we want to change all this because these are generic starter prompts and it, it comes with all the agents and we need something a little bit more precise. So I'm going to copy in a few that I've got ready to go. How do I connect with the VPN? How do I reset my password? And something that's not quite a question. Uh, I'm having issues accessing my email. So this would be based on the the analytics from the help desk uh, department with all of the like the maybe the top three most common questions that they get. Because if those pop up, chances are as soon as I go chat with this agent, one of those is going to be my problem. I can just quickly click on that button and hit the general uh, hit the send button or the generate button and I can immediately get uh, uh, help with that particular topic. I don't even necessarily have to type out all the things that that I want it to help me with. And that's a major time saver. So we've got those starter prompts. You you want to customize these to suit your particular needs and your common questions. The most common questions would be the most ideal. Then we've got the instructions for the agent. So these are those system instructions I was telling you about. You'll use the system instructions to tune this agent to the way you want it to behave. How, what, the, what tone you want it to use, well, what its job is, all, the, all those types of things. If you were to tell an assistant, a human assistant, uh, what job to do and how to do it, you want to think in terms of that. Now, here's the prompt that I've got for this particular agent. And I'll put it up on the screen as well, but I'm going to delete everything and then copy this in. Let me increase the size of this so that we can see. So I've got some asterisks here to kind of break out uh, the the different sections of this and of these instructions, and the agent will know how to handle that. It knows that you're kind of creating sections to to group the instructions into different types of um, behaviors. So we're telling it that the role is that it's an it's an agent to help users resolve technical issues. We're telling it it's going to respond with concise information to a direct to a directly address uh, a technical issue. If the agent isn't certain of what a user is experiencing, of what issue a user is experiencing, it's going to ask the appropriate questions to clarify. So it's going to know. Uh, it's not just going to take a guess necessarily. It's going to uh, ask follow up questions and things like that. This doesn't really even re require a lot of coding or any coding uh, in, in this case, because if you give it those types of instructions, very, very specific things of what it should do, then you're going to get that more customized behavior. We, we have at the bottom here, the tone, it's going to respond in a friendly manner. But you want to make sure you always specify the tone because it could be friendly, professional, uh, funny, sarcastic. You want to customize how that uh, agent should be, uh, should behave. In this case, someone's having a technical issue. They may be on edge as it is. So we want to be nice and friendly to uh, put their mind at ease and give them the information that they, they need so that they can get back to work. Now, once these instructions are put in, we're just going to click the save button. And this is going to save the agent. Now, you're probably asking, where is this agent getting saved to? This is currently being saved as an agent file right in the document library where we created it. Once this screen uh, is done, okay, we're done saving. I'm going to click close. And the agent will pop up. We're just going to close this. And you'll see that this file was created, helpdeskagent.agent. 
This, this is where the agent will live by default. It'll live right alongside the files where, you're, where you've created this. If you want to delete this agent, it's as easy as deleting the file. It's that simple. Now, what we need to do is to use this, we're going to go to the top right corner of the site and you'll see a Copilot button. This is where you'll find all of the agents for the site, as well as other agents that you've interacted with recently. It, by default, it comes up with the IT site. We're going to fix that because we want this to default to our help desk agent. But we can click on this down arrow and you'll see our agent right here at the top of the recent menu or the recent uh, group. We click on this and we see our custom welcome prompt. We see our custom conversation starters. And we can start asking it questions like if I just say, how do I connect to the VPN? It's going to be using those documents that we told it to use, and it'll tell us how to connect to the VPN. It will also give us citations. You'll see the footnote here, and if we expand out the reference here at the bottom, you'll see that it came, it pulled all that information from that particular document. And we could even open this up if we wanted to see the full instructions for this. Uh, hopefully, the instructions that the agent provide will be clear enough that they, it'll resolve the issues and the user can get on with their day. That's really the ultimate goal, but it's nice that it includes that document to kind of show its work of how it came up with that response. Now, if we go back to this drop down menu, you'll see uh, there's a difference here. There's the recent uh, agents, and you'll see approved for this site. These are agents that the admin or the site owner has designated as approved. The way we can do this, since I'm a site owner on this site, I could click the three dots men uh, menu and I could uh, click on set as approved. It's going to let me know that uh, this will be listed at the top of that drop down menu and it's, it'll be available for all the visitors to the site. So I think that's good. That's what I want. I'm going to set this as an approved agent. And you'll. the other thing it lets you know is, and you may have just seen it on the screen as well, the file, the, the, the agent file that was there was removed. It, was, it, was, it wasn't deleted, but it was moved to the site assets uh, library. That's where the approved agents are going to live. Now, if we were to go to um, go find that, we can go to site contents site assets and co-pilots and then approved here is where you'll find all of those approved agents the other thing we wanted to do is make sure that this help desk agent is our default one because it keeps coming up to that it agent so we've got our agent approved we've we've switched to it now we're going to click uh, the drop down and you'll see set as site default we want to set this as the default so everyone who comes to the help desk site or the IT site, when they hit that Copilot button to talk with an agent, it's always going to come up to the help desk agent first. There could be other agents, maybe for IT procedures or something like that, but we want this one to always be the default so that a user who's having an issue will get to this first. So I'll click on set as default. And then if I reopen this, we're right back to the help desk agent. We start straight there. That is perfect. This is what I want for my agent. Now you could, now you could create this on your, uh, if you have a, an actual help desk SharePoint site, that's different than IT. You could create this all, do all the things that we've just done on the help desk site. But this same process can be used to uh, create any agent that you need with any, any set of instructions and, and well, for how it should behave, what documents it should be using to ground on, all that kind of stuff. This is a great uh, template that you should use and start creating these on your own. Now, at some point, the agent may not be able to do everything you need it to do. You may need to be getting into more complex use cases where these SharePoint agents just come up a little bit short. That's when you'll have to switch to something like Copilot Studio or Teams Toolkit to create a little bit more advanced functionality. But this is always a good starting place because it doesn't require 
any special privileges. As long as you've got right, uh, right access on a SharePoint site and you've got a Copilot license, you'll have these available. So what do you think of these SharePoint agents? Have you started using them yet? Have you set up an example like a help desk agent just to show your organization what these things can do? Let me know in the comments below. Make sure you like this video. And if you want to see more examples of Copilot uh, in use within M365, then click or tap the screen and I'll see you over there.